So now we're going to talk a little bit about using the user's API. I'll explain about how the user's API functions, how to use it to create users, how to update users' custom attributes, how to change a user's roles, a user's applications, how to change the user state, how to delete users, and then, as usual, I'll be going through a quick Postman demo as well as some sample code. In this case, we always start with the base URL, API, usre one login.com, API, slash one, slash users. Now, if you want to get all users, you simply hit the users endpoint. And if you want to get an individual user, you hit slash users slash ID. You'll notice this pattern follows essentially the same that we had for the events API. We also allow for query parameters, so for example, get at the user's endpoint, question mark, email equals some value. This will look for all users where the email matches this particular pattern. And we do allow for wildcards through the use of star. So for example, if you wanted to get every user's email that ends at at onelogin.com, you could do email equals star at onelogin.com. You can also return users created with a window of time bound by specific created at values using the since and until parameters. For example, get users since this date until this other date. This is useful if you don't want to sync all users in one login's cloud directory and instead limit it to just those users that were modified within a certain time period. Creating or updating users always follows this sort of pattern. First, you want to search for the user by their email or their username if that's their primary unique key. In this case, we use users where email equals some very specific value. The endpoint will either return no records, which is to say there was no match for that particular user, or one record. If the user doesn't exist and there are no results, you can create a new user using the post method. This is once again the familiar API slash one slash users endpoint, except in this case we're doing a post operation. And then the body of the post consists of the bare minimum details about that user. We always require that you provide a first name, last name, email, and or username for any given user. Now, if the user does exist, you need to merge your updated values into the values returned by, by the get call and update using the put method. Put, again, very same endpoint, except in this case, you're passing in the ID of the user you got from the get operation. And again, the same rules apply as before with the user's body. One thing to note here is POST only allows you to create new resources. If you attempt to do a POST operation on top of an existing user, it will fail. This is why we use the PUT method when updating an existing user. Now the data returned by a user's GET operation re does return all of the custom attributes for a user. However, it may be desirable to understand what custom attributes have been set on a particular one login cloud directory. In this case, you simply do a get operation on the user's endpoints slash custom attributes. This endpoint will return the names of all the custom attributes that have been created in your account. Now, if you want to retrieve the custom attributes for a user, you simply perform a get operation on the users to return the, the user's custom attributes. These will be encoded in a custom attributes JSON object that's returned as part of the other details about the user. However, to set the custom attributes for a user, again, familiar endpoint with put users, the user's ID, slash set custom attributes. And in this case, it's simply a set of key value pairs where the, the first value is the name of the custom attributes and the second value is the value you want to put into that value. Now user roles function similarly. You may want to get a list of all the available roles to assign users to. In this case, it's a new endpoint. The familiar beginning pattern slash API slash one slash roles. 
This endpoint will return a paged array containing the name and ID of all available roles. In this case, it's an array where the first value is the ID and the second value is the name. Once you know what roles and what IDs are available within your account, you can use those IDs to get all users in a particular role. So here it's the familiar users endpoint, but in this case, with the query parameter, role equals some specific value. Now you may also want to get all roles for a particular user. In this case, get apiUS.com slash api slash one slash users, the user's ID slash roles. Now, roles are returned as part of the normal user's uh, endpoint, but sometimes you don't care about the other details. You really only care about what the roles are, and this endpoint will give it to you. Now, these endpoints function slightly differently. You can't always put to the roles endpoint, but in that case, you have to provide all the roles the user should be put in, and any roles that you don't set will not be set for the user. So we have two convenience methods. In this case, a put endpoint that allows you to add a specific role to the user while leaving the other roles the user is in untouched. Similarly, we also have a put command that allows you to remove roles. So this will allow you to remove the user from one specific role or more while leaving the other roles the user is in untouched. And this, as part of the body, will take a role ID array which is all the roles you want to either add or remove the user from. You may also be interested in getting all the applications for a particular user. So again, the familiar endpoint with the user's ID, slash apps. This endpoint will return a paged array containing details on all the applications the user has access to. This will consist of an application ID, what its name is, details about its icon, whether the user has been provisioned into that application, does the application require the one login extension, or does it use an, a, another method such as SAML to log the user in, what the user's ID is in that particular app, and whether this is a personal or company application. Finally, we get to deleting users. And again, this is a familiar endpoint useru.onelogin.com api slash users with the user's ID. And in this case, you simply perform a delete operation as opposed to a get, put, or post. Now let's do a little walkthrough in Postman about around how these APIs actually work. So here we are back in Postman, along with the library that we used. Ugh. So here we are back in Postman, along with the Get Users library. Again, this is a Postman collection I imported from developers.onelogin.com. In this case, it has examples for all the various calls you can make that have to do with the user's endpoint. So in this case, we see it set up with the environment variables. Once again, I'm using one of the authorization headers, in this case, an access token. And I send my request. And lo and behold, this returns the familiar data that we've seen in other APIs. First and foremost is the status block. In this case, it says there was no error. You also see some pagination information here, which indicates I've got more than one page of users being returned from this call. And then now, an array of details about the user. And you can see this returns quite a bit of information. It includes the user's ID, which I'm going to copy for future use, as well as details about what roles this particular user is in, as well as whatever custom attributes they're in. Now, this is a fairly chatty API endpoint, and it returns a lot of information about the user that I might not be interested in. So one of the things I can do, for example, is to say I'm only interested in certain fields. Oops, got to put a question mark in there. In 
this case, maybe I'm only interested in the user's ID, their email. and maybe their role ID. So now you can see much less chatty and the information returned is much more concise. I can, of course, also say, well, apparently there was more than one page worth of information. So I'm going to copy part of the cursor information in the pagination and simply add it to my URL. And again, more information is returned, but again, I see there, there's more information that I can still get. No, actually, I see that I've reached the end of my data. I'm sorry. This shows that, yes, I could page back to the previous result set, but the next link is set to null, which means there's no more information available. Now let's look at how we get information about a specific user. So in this case, it's the user's endpoint, but instead it's slash one particular user ID. And in this case, we see all the details about this one particular user. In this case, let's set this to say the last year. So from 2015, oh no, let's say, make it from, let's make this from all users created in the last year. And see what this returns. In this case, I see that it only returned one page of information. And you'll note all of these users were users that were created after the dates or before the date that I specified. Another endpoint we have is the custom attributes endpoint. And this simply returns all of the custom attributes that I've defined for my particular cloud directory. I can also take that user ID and see specific details about what roles they're in. In this case, the user is in no roles, so it returns an empty array. So now that we've gone through some examples in Postman, let's go through some actual code showing how to do various operations on the user's API. So here we are back in GitHub Gist. As with the previous events example, here we see the URL that we've set up. In this case, it's set to API slash one slash users. And as always, we're passing in an access token. This shows an example of all the various query parameters that can be set for each user query. And a little example of how to build a query out of the array filter that we've set up here. We set the authorization header to an access token, as with our other endpoints. And finally, we package the whole thing up into a get operation. We execute the query. And as always, we look at the data return, decoded as JSON, and as always, look for any sort of error message. If there's no error message, we next check to make sure that some actual data was returned and that our query didn't result in no results. Otherwise, it grabs the user data out of the array. And it's as simple as that. There's also a little bit of comments here to walk through the various parameters and how they operate.
Here again, we have an example hitting the user's endpoint, but in this case, it's slash one slash users, but now with an ID parameter added to the end of the URL. This will obviously throw an error if the ID parameter is empty. Again, this constructs a get query with the proper authorization header and executes the query. As with every other example, we first look for an error message, and if there's no error message, it simply grabs the user data. Similarly, we also have examples of how to get what apps a particular user has, getting what roles a particular user has, and getting just information about the custom attributes that are available for any particular cloud directory. This code sample also includes the ability to create a user. In this case, it's the user's endpoint, an array of the user data, the usual access token, and you'll notice that the request type is of type POST. All user creations are done through POST operations. And in this case, as always, it executes the query, looks for an error message, and then returns the user data. In this case, this code has been designed to print it out. So now that we've gone through some sample code for creating users, I'd like to talk a little bit about the various endpoints we have for authorization and authentication. 